This video tutorial is for the Lighting a Giant Elephant assignment. Um, we've done quite a bit of compositing up to this point. We've done the Godzilla and King Kong. Uh, you did your random video game uh, box cover. Uh, and in that time you may have found that it takes more than just accurately cutting out an image and pasting it into another one to uh, composite things that look realistic. Um, in this case, we're going to take an elephant from a, a jungle scene uh, just a picture that I found online, and paste it into this city street. Now the city street picture is uh, unique because the light is very golden. It's almost dusk, so you have the golden hour lighting. Um, also, your shadows are very long and angled um, because it's it's passing down that street. And so we're just pasting the elephant in is not going to be enough. And I'm going to show you a couple of techniques to create that shadow and to also relight the elephant so that it fits more accurately within this original scene. The files for this are found in my shared folder under Unit 1 Photoshop uh, number 8, Elephant Shadows. So you have an elephant and a street scene. Uh, what I'd have you do is open up Elephant first. It looks like this, and I will use the Quick Selection tool, the Quick Key for which is W, um, to cut out this elephant as closely as I can. And I'll start in the middle here, use my uh, quick selection tool, get the brush to be about a third of the size, and then start working my way out. Remember, I want to kind of stay away from the edges. If I cross over an edge, it's going to confuse um, Photoshop as to what I want. If I do go too far, though, it's pretty easy to just get out the, the, the subtraction tool by holding down Alt and removing the parts that I don't want. So I am going to finish this elephant and get it all cut out. and I'm going to paste it into my other scene, the street scene. Alright, I have the elephant completely uh, marqueed using the quick selection tool. Now I will press Control c for copy and then open up my street scene, which is in that same folder. And there I have it. And now I will paste this elephant in using Control v for victory and then I'll place it where I want it to go using the move tool, the quick key for the move tool, and it's a good idea to kind of get into the practice of using those quick keys, it'll save you a lot of trouble, is V. And then I can grab the corner, hold down shift, and drag it bigger or smaller, depending on how your version of Photoshop is set up. You may have to press Control T first before you can see that box around the elephant. Now I'm going to place this wherever I want, it doesn't really matter right now. Um, I'm trying to make it for, make it a really big elephant so that it stands out in the scene. It's got the emphasis there and I kind of want to make sure that that car behind it is not as visible too. And so I'm going to move that uh, somewhere around there and then press enter to OK my change. Now what you should notice is the elephant is lit completely wrong. The elephant is lit from the front when in the street scene it would be lit from behind and the lighting itself is not the right color. It's more of a midday light instead of this sunset light. So there are two things there that we need to fix. Uh, to fix this, I am going to use a, a fairly simple trick. I am going to try to create two different elephants. I'm going to duplicate the elephant layer, make an elephant that is the shadow uh, elephant with if there was no light on it, what would that elephant look like? And then also another elephant that is highlighted uh, with that golden light. And so this process is going to be fairly simple. If you need to pause as we go through or rewind it and, and make sure that you're getting everything, just make sure you're following along with this. So I'm going to come over to this layer one. It hasn't been named yet because I just pasted it. Right click on layer one and say duplicate layer. This is going to create an other copy of that. Right now I'll just press OK because I'm going to change the names in a second. Now I want to name these so I don't get confused. I'm going to be working with two elephant layers that are exactly the same. In fact, if I uneyeball one of these, you'll see that it kind of looks like nothing is happening. The reason for that is because they're exactly the same image in the exact same location. I would, I would need to remove both of them in order to not see them. And clicking on that eyeball uh, just temporarily turns that layer off, uh, its visibility off, so you can't see it. Um, I want to double click on the, the text of these layers to rename them. On layer one, I'm going to change that one to Highlight Elephant, and then double click on the copy the top one and call that shadow elephant. Now it's really easy to get these two mixed up so remember which one you were working on. I want to turn the visibility off of the shadow elephant 
by clicking on the eyeball next to it. Then make sure that the highlight elephant is selected. Once uh, a layer is light blue, it is selected. If you are selecting a layer that is not visible, you're going to get a lot of weird shapes and like for your mouse, it's going to give you the no symbol because you can't work on an invisible layer. So make sure that you are on the highlight elephant layer. And then we are going to do some color correction techniques. Now your color corrections are adjustments and you'll see up here in the middle above your layers tab are adjustments and these ones there are two sets of adjustments there's ones over here in image adjustments these are destructive they change the layer itself and so once you've made a change the only way to go back is to go back in your history or undo uh, otherwise it's permanent these ones over here are non-destructive edits that means that instead of changing the layer they're changing a, a new layer that is created just for that and if you decide later on ten years from now that you don't like it you can just delete that layer and you'll go back to your original and uh, all of these they have little symbols but they also the name appears where it used to say add an adjustment when you go over them there's a couple of changes I'll make here the first one is I want to change the brightness and contrast so when I click on that you'll see a brightness and contrast tab appear on or above the highlight elephant layer and on these ones I can either type the text in here or change the slider I'm gonna do a brightness of 30 and a contrast of 30 as well now one thing you should be noticing as I change this slider it's actually changing everything which is not what I want so by default these uh, non-destructive edits change all of the layers to make it change only the highlight elephant layer I need it to be above it so if it's not above your highlight elephant you can drag it there and then I want to hold down the alt key and as I hold down the alt key you'll see that when I am between the two layers see how the mouse changes when I'm between the two layers when it's that little box with the arrow pointing down with the alt button held down I will just click there and when I do that it indents and that little arrow is pointing down I have now applied this layer only to this one. This layer will only work wherever there's something on the highlight elephant layer. And then now when I change it, those changes are only going to happen to that specific layer. And it might not be as visible here, but if I change the brightness, you'll see that. So I'm going to turn the brightness up, and then I'm also going to add a color balance, which is the one that looks like a scale. So I'll click on color balance, and once, that, once again I need to hold down Alt, and just at the bottom line there, just click color balance again so that it's only applying. And you see as it indents, the arrows point down and they count on whatever one is the next one that it, it points to. Now with color balance, I can change uh, the, the tone of the picture. And I can do that in three different ways. I can change the shadows primarily, the midtones or the highlights. I'm not going to mess with that. I just want to do the midtones. I'm going to add some red. I'm going to do about. 15 or 16 of red and I'm going to change it quite a bit to yellow. And You'll notice on color balance that there are separate sides to the colors. The more yellow I add the less blue I have. I'm taking blue away um, in that image to create yellow. Same thing with green and magenta. They are the opposites of each other and so you'll remove one to have another. And Now I have a very orange elephant which matches a lot closer to the way that the lighting should be on there. And I might even want to go back and increase the brightness some more. One of the nice things about using these is I can then go back and just click on uh, whatever adjustment layer I want and make those changes even more. Okay. Now I still have a ways to go. It doesn't look good yet. We're not quite done yet. Now I want to turn off the highlight elephant layer and work on the shadow elephant. Now we're going to do the same technique. We're going to apply adjustments just to the shadow elephant layer. So make sure that the shadow elephant layer is selected and we'll add some more adjustments just to this one. Now this is the part of the elephant that is uh, in shadow that does not have the light facing it. So I'm going to go to brightness contrast again, turn the brightness way down and once again it's changing everything and the way that I stop it from doing that is just by holding down the Alt key and clicking between those two layers on that line between the two layers. Now my contrast will only be happening to that specific part. And I'll turn the contrast down. Maybe I'll even turn it up. Let's try turning it up. And um, if you don't like something that you've done, this is what's nice about a non-destructive edit. Oh, I don't like this brightness contrast. Make sure that one's selected. Hit the garbage can. Oops, and you might have to do it twice because I just changed the layer mask. And it's gone. 
So it's a very easy thing to, to experiment with. If you don't like it, just get rid of it or turn the eyeball off or just keep messing with it until it works. Another one that works really good for this is hue and saturation, which is the first one in the second row. And I'll hold down the Alt key and make sure it's only selecting those ones as well. And I'll turn the saturation way down. So saturation is how uh, intense the color is. And you might not see this, but Z, uh, negative 100 saturation is a pure grayscale image. And full color is kind of crazy. So I'm going to turn the saturation way down. Uh, turn the lightness down too, maybe. I don't want to lose the detail or the information in the elephant so much. But I do want to um, make him really dark because he's supposed to be in shadow here. Uh, hue doesn't really do much for us. Now, I want to turn the highlight elephant back on. And I can minimize my properties of my adjustment just by clicking those little double triangles there. Now I have a shadow elephant layer that is covering a highlight elephant layer. And if I were to remove portions, don't do this, just watch right now. But if I were to take like an eraser and remove portions of the Oops, wrong one. Of the shadow elephant layer, what happens is you would be able to see through the shadow elephant to the highlight elephant behind it. That is what we're looking for. Now, e an eraser will work, but an eraser is also a destructive edit. You're making a permanent change. Also, make sure that you are clicked on the shadow elephant layer when you do this. What Instead of erasing the shadow elephant, I am going to introduce you to a layer mask. A layer mask is like a non-permanent erasing. Uh, the way that we create a layer mask is down here at the bottom, the little square with a circle in it. If you're on the layer that you want, which is Shadow Elephant, I'll click on this layer to create a layer mask. Now this layer consists of two things. One is the original image, and if I click on that, I go back and I can change that image again. The other one is a layer mask. A layer mask is a black and white mask. A mask will cover things, just like a real mask does, uh, and allow you to see through them into the things behind them. So uh, that might make a lot of sense. Right now I'm going to get my regular brush tool. Make sure that my brush tool has a hardness of zero. And this is the paint brush. This is the brush that gives me color. Anywhere that I paint black on this image, down here you can see that you're, you've got your black and white as defaults. Anywhere that I paint with black is going to create uh, a mask on the shadow elephant at that point, which means now I can no longer see the shadow elephant there. The nice thing about this is if I make a mistake, I can switch to white. And I can do that either by pressing X, which changes between your two color settings, or I can click this little triangle here in this corner and click it there. Anywhere where I paint white, it's going to bring it back. And so it's like an eraser that you can uh, undo very easily. And so black masks, white unmasks. And you can even see if I just, I'm going to paint a lot of black here again. If you look over here where I just clicked, where the shadow elephant's mask is, anywhere where it sees the color black there in the mask, it's not going to show you it there. So let me go back and undo what I did. What I want to do is just mask the portions of the elephant that I think um, would have a highlight. Now the sun is almost directly behind the elephant here, so we're just going to see a halo or rim of light around the elephant. Now this is up to you. You get to decide. I've gotten out a black brush, making sure I'm on my layer mask for the shadow elephant and I've turned the hardness down to zero. I'm just going to very lightly and the I did a, a hardness of zero so that it was a nice gradual fade instead of a sharp edge and I'm just going to go around the outside of the elephant because I think that the lighting on this elephant would be very um, faint and just around the edges and including in between here I think the trunk it would get through the trunk as well and get a bit of lighting there and I may even find because he's so close to being just directly behind or in front of the, of the light that we get a little bit of a rim of light even around this far edge too. Now this is up to you. You're being an artist here. You have to decide where you think the elephant is being lit. And if you do make a mistake just switch over to your white brush Make sure the white is in the foreground and color it in again to remove that mask in that portion. So I think I got too much here. I'm going to undo that and 
and then I can go back to my black brush. X is the quick key to change between the two colors, the foreground and background color, and you can keep working on this uh, until you get it exactly the way that you want. But these non-destructive edits, like the, the layer mask, is a much safer way of doing things than with an eraser. Alright, I'll back out here now. I'll hold down the Alt key and roll my mouse wheel back. So now the elephant looks like, at least um, the lighting on the elephant itself, looks like it should enter the scene. But something that keeps it from looking like it's grounded in here is it does not have a shadow at all, even though these cars have very long, um, very dark shadows. Now this is a little technique that I've learned that, that works pretty well to create a shadow. So I want to choose, um, I'm going to choose the highlight elephant. And with the highlight elephant selected, I can click on FX and use something that's very useful called a drop shadow. Now a drop shadow usually is used to make something kind of look like it's a paper cutout that is just hovering above it a little bit. You can see if I move this drop shadow, it's it's kind of attached to the, the perspective of the elephant, but then I can just change how far away it is. But a couple of nice things about this drop shadow, it's shaped correctly. It's shaped like the layer that you're on. So I have an elephant shaped shadow and it's also semi-transparent. It looks like a shadow. So I just, I don't even have to change any of the settings inside of here. I can just press OK. Because what I really want is this little effect drop shadow that has appeared underneath the highlight elephant. If I right click on that drop shadow and say create layer, it's going to turn it, um, change it from an effect into its own separate layer. And I get a warning, some aspects cannot be reproduced, that's fine, just click OK in general. Now highlight elephant drop shadow is its own layer. And if I can pick this up, I can move it and you can see that it looks just like it. Now the last thing I have to do is free transform it. I can change this elephant to, to fit the rest of the scene. Um, Control T to do a free transform. I can pick up, this is one of the rare cases where I pick up um, not the corners of an elephant because I can pick this up and drag it underneath the other bounding box to make it go upside down. If I keep dragging it, the longer, the closer I will be to, to that. Now I also have to get the angle, so all of the car shadows are at this 30 degree angle or whatever. Um, I can use, there's a couple of different ways I can do that. I can come here to edit and under my transforms there are a couple of different ones that might be off your screen here, but there's scale and rotate and skew. You can also do those using a quick key. Once again, I'm down here at this very bottom one. I can hold down control and click on that bounding box and then I can skew it myself without having to choose a different transform. Now as long as I'm holding down control and my mouse, I can drag it to be the angle that I want it to be. And uh, Once again, I'm kind of just eyeballing it. That looks about right. Now when I press enter, I OK that transformation with the skew is what that's called. and uh, it's done. Now my elephant looks like it's really in this scene. And if I'd wanted to, I could duplicate that shadow if I want it to be darker. I can right click and duplicate layer. And that might be a little too dark, so I don't like that. I think I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, if you do finish with this assignment early and you still have some time left, you want to experiment with this, you can try to add another element to this scene and apply those same lighting techniques and drop shadow tech. Uh, techniques to create the same effect. But this is something that you can use in a lot of different projects to really um, make the thing that you have brought into a scene look like it should be part of it, especially that shadow. That is very important.